The second I sat down here, the people outside decided to start up their machines. <laughs> it's just so annoying. <laughs> Sorry for the noise, but uh, yeah, we are living in um, in an area where they're building houses. So, but uh, yeah, welcome to a random stitcher. My name is Lone. I am from Denmark. I'm going to do a stitch with me today, as I talked about yesterday, and I am going to stitch the little squirrel. No, I don't have a face. I don't have a picture. It's this one. If I have the energy for it, I put in a link, uh, a picture somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, I'm going to put it in a frame, a new frame. And I'm trying to attach this to my table. Uh, these are clamps and um, maybe it will be a, a problem because my table is quite high and they are very tight these so I'll try and see if I can do it. So I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, put the um, camera so that you can see it. I think I've turned the camera around and uh, you can uh, look down and see what I am doing. Yeah, so uh, let's go. Whoops, it easy. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a little bit smushed here. And that is because I, um, the video I uploaded yesterday, the haul from Fences and AliExpress and stuff, I showed you a big uh, dam uh, diamond painting, where did that come from? <laughs> I showed you a big cross stitch I got as a free gift and a couple of you um, wrote to me and uh, said it might look like one of those where the ink couldn't wash off. Uh, so I, um, I ran out and tried it and no, it cannot be washed off. I'm still going to do it because um, I have looked at the colors and looked at the print and I feel like because it's 16 count, the thread will be covering uh, the ink off very good. I'm using two strands like I would on uh, 14 count. So um, I'm going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Um, there's no, not many light colors uh, because light colors could be the issue and also in between, you know, every 10 there's this uh, line. But I feel like I'm going to try it anyway and just leave the, the ink on. Um, but <laughs> I got a little bit scared <laughs> because this one I don't, uh, I'm not sure if I want to do the background or not. Maybe I will, um, maybe not. Anyway, I feel like this could be very visible if the ink couldn't wash off, so I just got paranoid, so I ran out and tried it, yeah. It was just, uh, just wipe it a little bit uh, with the water on, a, on some paper and yeah, came right off, so no problem. Okay, but I am disappointed that they make uh, patterns like this. Uh, with the print on that can, cannot be washed off. Oh, yeah, it is what it is. So let's see if we can get this baby out. This is one of the frames I got um, from Fencils. It is 27.9 centimeters by 27.9 centimeters. And this is 30 by 30, so I figured it's good fit. And these are the clamps I'm going to use. Let's see if it will work on my desk. <coughs> Here it is. I also have um, this one I'm going to use, I think, in the side. Okay, so here it is. In the beginning, they can be, yeah, they keep on actually being tight. What I do is I remove this end and then I can, okay, the other one was easier, put that in again. Yeah, so 
I put it on the edge of a table, then I could have the edge in here and then I can push it down. That's the easiest way. See, came right off. So put that in again here and here. Next one, do the same thing. <laughs> it works, so why not do it again? Worked. the frame will it fit just about just about okay so let's see if we can attach it I'm just taking the magnet off and let's see yeah I'll just go for it doesn't matter that this can be covered because I can see it's so blurry now I'm going to put this on here. I'm always um, putting it right on and then I kind of twist it afterwards. This one. And then I can twist it like this and the fabric will follow normally. <laughs> Next one. You can tighten it when you kind of twist it here. So, yeah. There's not much to grip, so you can't tighten it that much. But for this video, I think it'll be fine. It's fine. You probably should have put it in a smaller one, but I really thought it would fit better as it than it fits a little. I think it's tight enough for me to stitch. Yeah, have a little drum effect, so that's fine. So now comes the big question: How can I attach it? So here we have this one. You can then loosen, and then you can. Put it where you want it. So I think I just put it here. <laughs> it doesn't have much to grip on because there's a small edge where I can put put it, but um, it's not much to grip on. So let's see if it goes. I think I will put it here. Tighten it. The other side. Loosen it. Do have room for my arm here, so yeah. I think that might work. It's holding on pretty well. And the thing about it's only one centimeter. It's got a grip here, here. It's only one centimeter here, and it can grip because underneath it, there's kind of a a high uh, iron plate or something that has to get under if I wanted to really get a grip on the table. But I only have this one centimeter or something in here so <laughs> not a lot let's see if we can get it to work <laughs> uh, okay i think this could work yeah i think so let me lock the screen so i think i'm going to work on the um, again sorry for the noise but uh, little fairy. So I think I'm going to work on the pink because I have uh, quite a few of those. This, um, as much as I really love the image, uh, it is very blurry uh, on the fabric. 
on the pattern it's not so and I don't bring brought my pattern in here so I think I'm just going with the pink and then we'll see <sighs> I do need to get the pink I need, do need to get the pattern sorry I need to get the chart I got it, I got it. And the pink symbol is number two. Number 225. I believe it is a very, very light pink. Let's find out. Here, yeah, it is. It is this one. So I will be stitching with three strands. Taking out so now they're also talking outside. Yeah, See. Nope. Did not want it to cooperate. They yeah, are sorry for the state of my nails. They, uh, they needed a break from fake nails. My beautiful fake nails. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they just need a break because they get uh, kind of fragile and stuff if I don't. So. So let's go. That's a big needle I think I got my hands on. Can't get in between it. Come on. Okay, sell for that. <laughs> So, I'm having a nice week so far, it's Wednesday, here in Denmark it is uh, quiet weather, it's not quiet outside because of all the machines, but the weather is quiet, so that's nice, and it's uh, pretty warm, I think around 6 degrees or something, so they're not speaking of snow at all, they are talking a little bit about rain. <clears throat> so, but uh, we'll see about that. So, yeah, this little squirrel, um, as you can see, I have done the face, a little bit of the face, and it is starting to look a little bit like I can see ears, I can see the top of the head here, the eyes are starting to shape. Um, I don't have high hopes for it. But um, 
If I wasn't doing a stitch with me, I would have worked on the face, but it just takes a lot of concentration because the symbols are very blurred. I don't know if you can see it, but they are very blurred, um, especially the red ones. Uh, those here, they're actually red uh, with a white circle in the middle. And for, to me, it just looks red. And that's the case for a lot of the red symbols. So it's really not easy. And I didn't want to sit and struggle with that. <laughs> that was a struggle, but so it was not going on. So I decided on this pink one is easy to see and there's a lot of it, so it's going to be it. I think next one I will put up this uh, frame. I will try and um, <clears throat> and maybe changing the placement of it, but it, it works so far. It's fine, but um, I don't have much room for my hand here. Yeah, so. But I'll experiment with some positions. <coughs> so yesterday we um, got an unexpected visit. My son is a very busy guy, he's a waiter and um, sommelier, I don't know what's the word in English, but he's um, an expert in wine and um, he is a manager on a restaurant, in, in a restaurant and he's working a lot and when he's not working, he is uh, working out, <laughs> goes in a gym uh, almost every day. He um, I think I uh, accidentally didn't mean to, but I think I accidentally passed on my depression bipolar stuff. He, he doesn't have a diagnosis, but uh, he does suffer with um, uh, occasionally uh, depression feeling, not serious anyway, and all this exercise helped him a lot. So. He's a busy guy, and um, him and his uh, fiance, they have been together. He's 31 soon. He's turning 31 in March, and um, he and uh, him and <laughs> I can't find out how to say it. <laughs> well, um, the couple have been together ever since school. Uh, ever since I think he was 15 and she was 14 or something so they has they have been together for many years they don't have any children they don't want children and they have um, consciousness you know they have decided that they don't want that so and really they don't have the time for it and if they don't want to make the time then they should have shouldn't have children so I completely back that up um, Alex, my son, is um, is very career orientated. <laughs> okay, my English is really bad. Uh, yeah, he goes. He he wants a career, and uh, he has worked in a lot of restaurants. And the last uh, and every time he uh, he he got a little bit of better um, job and better pay, and so he does not have the sommelier, it was, I think it was last year, or, yeah, I think it was last year, um, he got that um, education. It lasted a long time, a year, I think, on top of the normal waiter career, uh, uh, waiter education, so, um, yeah, and it cost a lot of money, but the restaurant paid for it, so, so now he has uh, expertise and he's very, very good at it. He knows uh, a lot about wine and whiskey and uh, stuff like that. So, and he knows what I like. So uh, 
It's not like when they uh, he decides to. Sometimes he pops by and he brings some wine for me. <clears throat> it's not like he just picks random. He knows exactly what I like, and so he um, and they always <laughs> nice wine. Then the wine at the price that I rarely buy. <laughs> I'm very cheap when it comes to it. So yeah. He's very good at it, and sometimes he uh, he talked about if you want to buy wine at some point, you could look at this and this and this and this, this and and um, yeah, so it's nice. I do like a glass of sweet wine, bubbly wine, sometimes, and uh, so his uh, fiance. They was about to get married a couple of years ago, but they, they decided not to because they don't. She's not working, so the only income they have is his pay, and so it was not possible to get that wedding that she wanted. She had a girl's dream of a big wedding and stuff, so yeah, cost too much money. So. Even though we could contribute, we couldn't pay it all, and yeah. So, but that's them engaged. Been together always. That's rare these days, really rare. So. She is um, doing a small jobs. Sometimes she she do lashes, fake lashes, um, extensions, uh, lash lash extension, yeah. And a little bit nails also, so sometimes she does a little bit like that, but she doesn't have a 9 to 5 job, so... Okay, I cannot find it. <laughs> Go the other way. I feel like I need to get a little bit lower. I feel like I'm sitting a little bit high. So, let me correct that. If I can. Yeah, so. They have a dog named Paul, and him and my dog, our dog Albert, is best friends. Even though they're both males, they get along so good. And. Um, Every time they are together, they're just uh, so, so sweet. They seek each other's companies and... We have to hide all Albert's toys because uh, Paul is... Um, he's a street dog from... Oh, I can't remember the name of the, what country it was, but um, he's adopted and he was a former street, street dog. And sometimes he can't get a little wild. And he loves to chew up toys, <laughs> so they had to buy some toys that were, sorry, that were um, um, kind of proof for um, um, for chewing. So they managed to to find one brand that really kept their promise that this could not be chewed. So and uh, that's the only brand they could find. All the other things he just chew, 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 chew. So that sounds like a train. Chew, chew, chew. <laughs> yeah. So they, when he was uh, a big puppy, he chewed up everything: pillows, remote controls, uh, wallets, uh, everything that was in his reach. He just chewed it up. But he was big, frust a bit frustrated also because he, the background he had, so slowly they got him um, straightened out and he's such a good boy. Yeah, he's a wild thing, but um, active dog. Six years old now, they actually were born two days apart or something, my dog Albert, and, and him. So. so they also have two cats. And yeah, I don't know, maybe you can 
kind of figure it out, but I just love cats. I always have had cats almost all my life. I had a cat as when I was growing up and um, also had a turtle <laughs> and I had a hamster and I had fish. <laughs> Funny story about those fish. I had a small fish aquarium with some of the smaller ones in. And one time, because we, we lived uh, near a, um, a kind of a lake, so my brother and I we went down to the lake and we, um, we caught some smaller fish, small enough to fit in my aquarium. But I didn't know was that they were predators, so <clears throat> yeah, they ate all my fish. When I when I got up next morning and I looked at my fish tank, there they were, those two <laughs> predators all alone and looking very happy and well fed. So I learned a thing there, I think. <laughs> Oh man, I was heartbroken. But, uh, yeah. I also had that turtle. It was actually called um, Sherlock Holmes. I um, I was a big book reader when I was growing up and I liked to read Sherlock Holmes stories. And yeah, I just felt like he reminded me of that when he just sniffed around and he was so... He was not blind, but he was uh, poor-sighted. So. I had a orange basket, plastic basket on my floor and every time he was set on the floor he just stared right at it because I don't know if he thought it was a big uh, giant uh, carrot or what but uh, he always stopped close to it and then he started to nibble on it. <laughs> I really think he thought it was a big carrot. So uh, it was a fun one. And uh, yeah, hamsters and guinea pigs, I, I have them all. And they were running free in my house, in my room, not in my house, in my room. Oh yeah, those were the days. My mom and dad, they didn't mind. I think my mom was quite an old hippie or something. Oh, she was not. But um, She was a free spirit, free mind. And she didn't mind that uh, there was uh, guinea pig poop all over the floor. <laughs> I was so spoiled. I didn't even have to uh, clean up after it, so... Yeah. I had two guinea pigs in, in each cage because I didn't know that they were pack animals. They, they like to be... they thrive the best if they can be together. I didn't know that, so I thought they would fight if they put together. But one day, uh, the, the cages were open. Up until then, they had to uh, run um, on the floor free but only one at a time you know so when uh, when the other one went to run on the floor I put the other one back in the cage but one day I forgot to close the cage and I had just cleaned it and stuff so they were placed so that they could um, their entrance were up against each other so well, later that day I came in and I could see that the one cage was empty and I was just, oh man, I can see I forgot to close the, the gate. <laughs> and I looked around, oh my god, where is it? And um, <laughs> then I saw the other cage. There they were, cuddling up. <laughs> so from there on they just lived together because that's what they wanted, apparently. I kept both cages because then they could um, hop in and out as they wanted to, but uh, yeah, they ran on the floor, so... My little hamster was... They, they don't get very old, my hamster, uh, hamsters. I think maybe two years, if you're lucky. So... And... Um, the little hamster also ran ran loose, uh, ran around free, so it um, it had his food, you know, hamsters, they can put food in their chin, and um, so they uh, stuff it in their chin, and they look like they have swallowed two golf balls or something, 
or carrying two golf balls in their mouth. Uh, and when they come to their nest or whatever, they take it all out. And this little thing decided to uh, my drawer with the underwear was a perfect place for that. So it had his food <laughs> in my underwear drawer. Oh man, and, and I just said, yeah, that's fun. I don't think my mom actually was that happy about it, but uh, yeah, she let me do it, so... I think my animal lived a happy life, and I have um, I have kept on doing it like that with my... For the first time in my life, I own a bird. It was a rescue bird. It came to us tired and hungry and uh, thirsty and everything, very dehydrated, and decided when we were walking and... Um, he saw us and decided, I want to go home with those people. So um, he just flew to us and uh, I could pick her up easily. It was a canary bird. So I was just, what am I going, what are we going to do? Uh, I don't know anything about canary birds. And um, so I decided to, we decided to take it home and try and see if we could find the owner. We couldn't, so I decided, well, we're going to keep her. So she was in a cage a couple of weeks and then I was in a Facebook group and they said you have to get a lot of canary birds. Uh, they want company and so we tried to get her company and she did not like it. Gave it a chance some days but he, she just chased it and she wouldn't let it eat and I don't know if it was because she has been starving and so that she was not willing to share <laughs> food or whatever that we just had to um, give it back. I I struggle to find the hole here. It's like I can't find it. Maybe here. I don't think so. Any. Yeah. So yeah, we um, put that back. Luckily, they wanted to, they agreed to take it back. So now she's alone, and then I thought, what then? Um, she don't have any company, she sits in a cage all day. I just hadn't, I just didn't like that, because I'm very... Um, I love birds, I love animals. I, I, I don't like birds in cages, because I believe that animals should have as natural a life as possible. So I've read somewhere that uh, you actually can uh, open the cage and they will fly out and they will come back very quickly because they are big food, food lovers so they will not be away from their food for very long. So <laughs> for two weeks I tried and she would not leave her cage. She wouldn't. So um, then I, um, we were about to move. What is this? Oh. Uh, and um, I tried to put her, it was actually quite a, um, coincidence, because we were moving, we were packing up and I had to move her cage and the gate was open every day and she just wouldn't leave, but then I moved it and all of a sudden she flew out. So apparently the light fell uh, in a bad way for her, so she couldn't see that um, there was open space. So from that day on, she um, she just flies out, flies around as she wants to, and uh, she seems like a happy bird. So and canary birds don't shit that that much, so that's nice. <laughs> they do shit, yeah, they do, but not you know big ones, just small ones. So. <sighs> I think I can up. Got in there. I want it to be nice.
This is a big deal, so I don't have to use my thread. So let's see if we can get the right hole, please. I think that's better. Okay, so I think this is the last stitch. Let me see if I can get up here without. I'm finding it hard to see something. No, oh, I'm going the other way. Then I can go down, that's much easier. And you're struggling to find the right hole. Okay. So yeah, we got a little bit done. What to see? It kind of hold up, even though it doesn't attach to um, too much on the table. So kind of hold on. So that's nice. Yeah. Well, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. There will be a stitch with me again. I don't know, sometimes this week with a Counted and a PR package I'm going to do an unboxing and yeah, we'll see. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will speak to you in the next one. Take care and happy stitching. Bye bye.